Boom. How's it going, Weezer Pack? I'm Lil Weez, and we're back with another Black Ops 3 video. Now, this video, uh, I've compiled a load of Search and Destroy matches that I actually was uh, was playing. Uh, I've, Search and Destroy is one of my favorite game modes at the moment in this, in Black Ops 3, and uh, I just wanted to show you guys sort of how to improve. So, this is the class we're going to be using. We're using the Razorback, Silence, or the Quick Draw, as you saw there. We're using Six Sense. Now, I'm hovering over Ghost here because... This isn't a live commentary, by the way. This is all footage which I've taken and snapped over and stuff like that. So, um, the class is the class you're seeing may change a little bit because I some of these games I was level fifty something, and then some of them I actually prestiged by that point. So the classes will vary ever so slightly, but it's mainly going to stick towards the the stuff of six cents, hardwired, already up, awareness, and blast suppressor. And I think on some of them I was using Ghost instead of Sixth Sense, and that was before I prestiged. But we're always going to be using the Razorback with Quick Draw and Silence. Uh, almost slurred my words there. So, I mean, I think... See, right, right there. Okay, so there's going to be some cuts in this gameplay, but that's only because it's me cutting out sort of like the kill cams and stuff just to save time so the video doesn't last forever. So if you see cuts and stuff like that, that's because I have done that. So yeah, we'll be we'll be using the Razorback in the S and D. All of the S and D games you're going to be seeing, and uh, I think the Razorback's a fantastic weapon for search and destroy, mainly because there isn't really like right here, for example, like right here. Okay, see right there. So that's what I love about the Razorback in search and destroy. There's no point of where this gun is really weak, because it's good up close. It's hang on. Oh, my phone went off, sorry. It's good up close, it's good at medium range, it's good at long range, it's kind of... It's good at everything, because for those of you who don't know, it's a very... High... High accuracy SMG with low damage, so it's not fantastic up close, don't get me wrong, but this guy's got... I mean, he's got stuck in each other for ages. So it's not the best at long ranges, but medium range to close range is where it, uh... Kind of excels. Close range, not so much, because its fire rate is quite low. I think, uh... I read somewhere that its fire rate is around 625, so that's very low. So yeah, we will be cycling through loads of maps in these gameplays as well. I think I've got a total of three different gameplays. Um, so three different maps, they won't always be the same map. And basically, I don't know, I just... This class I was using just worked really well in Search and Destroy. And as you can see, one of the main points I can give to you guys for how to improve in S&D, because that's what this video is, it's going to be sort of helping you guys improve it, Search and Destroy is always scout the perimeter of the map before going into the middle. That's what I find is extremely useful. So Dead Silence is also a very good perk if you're not a fan of Blast Suppressor and you, don't, you find yourself on the floor more than on the walls. Um, but scouting the perimeter of the map is essential in Search and Destroy because, don't get me wrong, going straight to the middle you can catch enemies like by surprise and they don't expect you. But the majority, so this, right now, the first game, we, I'm currently 2-0 and and we're 2-0 and rounds up, just to let you guys know, but yeah. Um, so yeah, scouting the promise of the map is absolutely essential because this allows you, especially if you're using awareness, it allows you the majority of the space of the map you're running around, so you will be able to hear footsteps if there is anyone, and if you, you probably run into people, but if you don't, then you know that they are around the middle of the map. See, that was me using the C4 there. I don't know if you guys know, but the C4 works a little bit different in this game. The C4 actually works as a, almost like a claymore. So you throw it and it has a sensor. And when that sensor gets, like, triggered, it tells you by going red. And it tells you kind of when to explode your C4. And that's what I did there. So I had no idea the guy was up there until he triggered my C4 alarm. And uh, actually, I just blew him up. Okay, so right here, I've just planted the bomb. I think I've already killed two people already. And um, I believe I get to the last man standing here. And I kind of just camp it out. I mean, this is what you're supposed to do in Search and Destroy. Um, I don't mind if some people start calling me campers and, uh, you know, all of that. Because that's what you do in Search and Destroy. You play tactically. The idea of Search and Destroy is you think... You have to think what your enemy is going to do. And you need to place yourself in a position where you'll be able to counter that. Like right there, I knew he was going to come in through that way, especially after he killed my teammate. So I chose not to move. I, I ignored the right side and just aimed left because I knew he'd be coming that way. So it may be camping, but in Search and Destroy, it's just it's outthinking your enemy. It's thinking, what would I do? And then you got to counter that. 
So that's, I mean, Search Destroy is hands down probably my favourite game mode and always has been in Call of Duty, to be honest. Uh, but I haven't enjoyed a good Search and Destroy since, God, since back in Black Ops 2 or maybe even Modern Warfare a little bit. But, like, I really like it in this game. I think it's so tactical how you have to outthink your enemies at every move and you get to the point of the stage of the game, like right now, for example, where you know people have their specialists pre-patch. I say pre-patch, I'm going to get into that later. So you know people have their specialists around this point. So um, you have to, you have to like bait them out. You have to get them to use their specialists and you have to know what specialist is going to be around what corner and you've got to try and bait it out and again, think what he's going to do with that specialist. This is why I actually think it's extremely important to take note of actually what specialists are going to be in the game when you're loading in. So take note of sort of if you see an Annihilator pistol or take note if you see like a gravity spice or something because that's going to save your life because you're going to see that specialist and you're going to know, okay, so that's that's ruined. Okay, we snapped to the next game. I'm going to just go, go ahead and say we snapped to the next game. So we're now playing on whatever this map's called. I actually completely forgot, so sorry about that. But we're still using the Hive Specialist. I don't know if I actually said that or not. But yeah. Okay, where were we? Yeah, so you're going to see that guy's ruin. And you're going to know we're like three rounds in. So you're going to know that guy has gravity spikes. Yeah? You're going to know that. So you're going to have to bait it out. You're going to have to be careful. You're going to know not to rush him. You've got to really think about the encounters that you do. And that's going to save your life more often than not. Because Search and Destroy is just one big mind game. Um... But yeah, so that's one of the things I suggest is you always see me working around the perimeter of the map throughout all these gameplays and throughout all of the things. I think I went like 7-1 and one in that last game or 8-1. Oh, and one. and pretty much every game, I don't die more than once in Search and Destroy because you just work the perimeter, work your way down to the middle and just check off your list as you go around in the map. So you're like, okay, he's not there, he's not here, he's moved here. That means he's pushed towards B. And you start to get an idea of where the enemy is just by cutting out and going round and scanning out the areas where he isn't. So that's why I think working the perimeter is so essential in Search and Destroy. Um, other essential things are definitely just the weapons you choose and the attachments you have on your weapons. I know that's really obvious, but obviously silences work very well in Search and Destroy, depending on the weapon. It's nice to stay off the map, but you don't want to crucify your weapon for it. Now, in my opinion, I wasn't a, I wasn't keen on the Razorback with a silencer at first, but then it grew on me because I know that the Razorback has an amazing five-shot kill range. Like, I think it's like 76 meters or something for its five-shot kill range. Which is just amazing, and even with the silencer, that's going to be nerfed down to, what, like 50, nice work, maybe Blackout. 60? So, you know, now I know the amount of bullets it's going to take to kill someone, I know how many bullets I have to fire into someone. And I think the Razorback now works very well Charge with the silencer, fire. once I knew the sort of damage aspects that I'm going to be dealing with. So, uh, but I, I do recommend silencers, but obviously you don't want to butcher your weapon with it. Like, for example, I know that the Shiva and the XR2 are not fantastic with silencers. I mean, you can get away with it in Search and Destroy because it's not often you're going to come into gun battles where, you know, you need to snap from one to the other and one to the other, one to the other like that and get fast time to kills. You know, most of the time you've actually got one-on-one -on -one encounters in Search and Destroy unless you know you're flanking up. Almost fell off there. Oh my god, that was so scary. Um, but yeah, so silences work well, and obviously perks are extremely essential in this. Um, I highly recommend Dead Silence, because it's not often you're going to come across a Search and Destroy player who doesn't have awareness. And if you have Dead Silence on, then you literally nerf his awareness perk up to a good, I don't know, like 80%. Your, your footsteps are much harder to hear, and I think if you're crouched, it's impossible for them to hear you. I think your footsteps are completely silent. They can still hear you very, very, like, mildly, even though you have dead silence if you're sprinting around. But if you're crouched, I think, with dead silence, you're just completely silent. There's no way they can see you, uh, hear you, sorry, and see you, technically. Um, so, yeah, perks are also very important. Blast suppress is so important because minimap awareness in Search and Destroy is just... Oh, my God. I mean, I use my minimap more than I look at my screen and my gun. Uh, minimap awareness is so essential and I pretty much keep my eyes glued to that top left and even if I'm just looking for someone who hasn't got blast suppressor and I see a little ping on the radar for him boosting around I know someone's someone's there and I can plot how I'm gonna get to him and the route he least suspects me to get him from and that is just 
that's what I mean about like perk awareness. It's so it's so essential to pick the correct perks in this, and the perks that suit your playstyle. So if you're going to be boosting around a lot and you got an SMG and stuff like that, then blast suppressor is essential because you're going to be boosting around a lot and you don't want to come up on that radar of small little pings. And yeah, so perks are so important. Six senses is very good, which also leads me on to my next point. Hardwide is amazing. Hardwide literally makes Sixth Sense useless and it makes Tracker almost pretty, like, pretty not very good. That was terrible English for me there. But it makes Tracker not very good at all and, you know, you can't get killed by trip mines or shock charges, which you see everywhere in Search and Destroy. I highly recommend Hardwide. Like, beyond belief, I could not recommend Hardwide anymore for Search and Destroy. Also, Specialists do matter what specialist you pick. You've got to pick a specialist that caters to your playstyle. So if, you, if you're running gunning, you're going to want to pick someone who has gravity spikes. You're going to want to pick Ruin, stuff like that, because that helps clear out rooms, which you know are going to be, you know, filled with people. It's, it's one of those things. So specialists do matter, but s recently there was a patch on Black Ops. I'm just going to say this very quick. There was a patch on Black Ops recently, which made it very hard for you to get your specialist during objective game modes because people were getting it too often in domination and all that so they made a patch so it's much slower to get your specialist in um much slower to get your specialists in fucking god objective game modes but they didn't cater for search and destroy not one bit and search and destroy is just horrible for specialists you cannot get specialists anymore they need to fix this I can go an entire game and go 7-1, and one, plant the bomb twice, and I will not get my kinetic armor in that search and destroy game. So this is something that needs to be fixed. It's probably going to be fixed by the time this video is put up, knowing my luck. But if you guys are watching this, don't your specialist with the most recent patch, it doesn't matter too much. But we're actually getting quite close to the end of the video now. But um, as you saw at the beginning of this Thank game... I went 0-1 straight off the bat. I went to lie down, pick off this guy, and I just went 0-1. He he was lying down, camping harder than me, and I just lost it. I put on my hard fucking sweatpants, and this is literally the next round. So I've already picked up three kills this round. And we're going to pick up a fourth right here. And we're going to pick up a fifth. So we go from 0-1 to 5-1. Sweatpants were on. And that was pretty much it for that game. We did end up winning that, but that was pretty much all I did that game. But that brings us right to the end of the video. So I hope the tips helped you guys for Search and Destroy. I hope you like my gameplays and all that. And uh, thanks very much for watching. And let me know in the comments below if you want to see any other game modes, any other tips, or anything else you want to ask me about Search and Destroy, because it's definitely my favorite game mode at the moment, and I'll be happy to talk about it. But anyway, thanks for watching, guys. And um, yeah, do, do all the lovely things, like, comment, and do all that. And... Uh, I will see you in another video, and who knows, maybe I'll see you on the battlefield. Alright, weasel out.